When you look at an amazing image, be that in a magazine or up on the wall in an exhibition, chances are it's undergone some degree of post-production work. Now with digital photography, that would obviously happen in a computer. And I know that some of you love sitting there fiddling with your images and adjusting and tweaking, which is brilliant. But I also know a lot of you don't. You've written in and you've said you'd much rather get it right in camera and just be able to leave it alone. But even back in the days of film, when you took your roll of film to a high street mini lab, they would have adjusted the density, how bright or dark it is, and the colours, even though you didn't know about it. Now, post-production has actually been around pretty much since the dawn of photography. I'm here at Itching College in Southampton, who have very kindly lent me their darkroom so I can show you what I mean. As I'm back at college, I thought it'd be a bit of a wheeze to make a print from one of the very first black and white negs I ever shot when I was doing City and Guilds at college myself, which was 20 odd years ago. Now look, it's a kind of flat looking image. There's an image there, but it looks a bit misty, a bit dull, a bit lifeless. With a little bit of post-production in the darkroom, I think I can make a big difference to that. Right, that's the enlarger loaded with a new sheet of paper. So, to increase contrast in the good old days, you had to use either a different grade of paper or one of these. This is a contrast filter. This paper is sensitive to different coloured light. So, I'm using a number three contrast filter to lift the contrast a bit. I wanted it a little bit darker, so I've opened the aperture on the enlarger a bit. It's all a bit of a faff, isn't it, compared to digital? Right, so I'm going to put the Coloured filter over the lens of the enlarger and we're just going to make an exposure. Now, there it goes. Now, 14 second exposure. I've opened the lens of the enlarger a little bit so it's letting out a bit more light. Because in photographic printing, more light means a darker print. Whereas in the film side of it, it obviously means it's overexposed and it's too bright. Right, that's our initial exposure. Next thing I wanted to do was to darken in that sky. So what I'm going to do is open up the lens of the enlarger some more. There we go, that's one. It's almost two clicks. Click and a half I've gone. Because I want lots more light to hit the sky. And the reason how I'm going to control it and make it all a bit more moody around the edges is to cause what's called dodging and burning. I want the light to hit the empty sky area which will make the sky go dark. To achieve it, instead of making a hole with my hands, which I could do, and let light pass through it onto the sky area, I'm going to mask the area that's okay. It's like doing seagull impressions on a wall. Right, here we go. So the enlarger's set, we're going to run another 14 seconds, and I've got to be very ready. Here we go. Right, hands under the light. I need to make a little shape here to dodge that, and it's, there we go. So now, all the time, there's light burning onto the top of the picture, and that church spire and the sky, but it shouldn't be doing anything on the rest of it, which was okay. I am going to give it a little tiny bit of a burn around the edges as well, though. So a quick one of those, like that, in the corner. Put a dark vignette all the way around these corners, just kind of like that. And we should be there. Let's go and see what we've got. Did it work? So, this is kind of really quite exciting. This is the bit which I used to really enjoy doing. This is, I suppose, akin to the modern uh, watching a piece of paper come out of the printer. So, 20 seconds, slide it under the chemistry, and let's see what happens. This process takes about 60 seconds. What, the way this works is this silver in the paper. Now, silver tarnishes, doesn't it? These chemicals are accelerating that tarnish process. They're affecting silver crystals, which have already had light hit them, and it's accelerating the tarnish. Look, 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 look. Here we go. We've got that very kind of moody thing going on in the corners of the sky where I dodged it. It's a very different look to the straight print we've got outside. It's going to take a few more seconds as we wash this backwards and forwards. With, the, with colour printing, that was a whole different ball game because you couldn't work under red light. Colour printing was all done in complete darkness, pitch black. Not like this with the red lights on, no matter what you saw in movies. Pop that into there to stop the developer. Now, also, believe it or not, Kodak in London, in their labs and possibly around the world, were the largest employers of blind people in the world. 
because obviously blind people can work in these conditions and it's no different, it's completely normal. So they were brilliant when it comes to working with photographic printing. Right, let's rock that backwards and forwards. This is called Fix. For those of you that don't know, what this is doing is bleaching away any of the silver crystals which haven't been affected by light because we don't want those. You take your picture outside into the daylight, all the unaffected crystals, they're going to start to be affected and you'll lose the picture, it'll just vanish. So this is going to take about a minute of washing backwards and forwards and being bleached. But as you can see, I think already, just looking at it in the tray, that's a bit of post-production. And it's a lot more faffy than it is on the computer. But it does result in a very nice image. Now all these things, dodging and burning, they all happen in the computer. You have a little hand which does things. You'll see that in a minute. Right, I reckon that wants a few more seconds. That's fixed. It's bleached away all the silver and we put it into the wash. And all we're doing now is washing it to take away any of the chemicals so we can go outside. There we go, fresh out the dryer and quite different. Look, here's the original print. Very grey, washed out, no sky detail, but it's okay. This one, I have gone a bit over the top, but with some post-production it's much darker, much more moody. I've added some sky and some contrast. You can see post-production has made a big difference. Now, you could also do image manipulation in a darkroom. By using bleach on a print, you could remove things from the picture that you didn't want in it. Very often you'd see black and white shots of models which had had their eyes bleached, the white area, to make them much more starey. You could add and remove, you could add, sorry, not remove, you could add artifacts by sandwiching negatives together in the enlarger and printing through them both at the same time. There were loads of things. Working with colour, you could do some amazing stuff, but you had to be very, very skillful. You also had to have a whole bunch of chemicals which deteriorated pretty quickly, and the big downside, whatever way you do it, you needed a great big dark room to do it in.